general idea about psychokinesis is that it's accidental, it's unintended, it's spontaneous, it's not controlled by the individual. The individual may not even suspect that they are responsible for the psychokinesis. There's a sort of variant on this, which is the general notion of thought forms. This is the contention that through concentration, human beings can manifest an idea in the physical world. So that if you concentrate for a very long time, you will create something uh, in, in the world. Now, the most famous example of this is within Tibetan Buddhism, where there, is, there are actually disciplines that people would practice to create what's called a tulpa. A uh, tulpa could be um, something that you would spend many months working on, and when you created it, it would look like a solid 3D human being that other, other humans would, would regard as um, just a, 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 an, another ordinary person. Now, sometimes we hear tulpas would go rogue, they would they would lose control they would lose slip out of the control of the people who created them and they would become troublesome they would in fact act like poltergeists and we find another example of this in a completely different context in the early 1970s we find a group uh, interested in in psychological research in toronto and what they did they set out to create a ghost a ghost that didn't exist at all so as a collective idea, they invented a 17th century English nobleman. They created a biography for him, his relationships, his where he lived, um, who he loved, who he hated, what his name was. And then they started to invoke him. They started to ask him to appear. And lo and behold, Philip, as they called him, started not to manifest as an apparition, but to manifest as a poltergeist. So the table would start to rock, things would start to... To, to, to move. Um, when they asked Philip to move things, Philip would move them. Philip didn't exist as a ghost. He had never existed in the real world, but it seemed to me, it seemed that the collective had created him. And he, he was only in existence when that collective was, was working together. And we find another example from New York in the 1920s, when we have a bunch of very precocious teenage boys who were really interested in sort of psychological phenomena, and they start having seances, and they create a figure called Dr. Bindelhoff, who, who claims to be the deceased spirit, sorry, claims to be the spirit of a deceased um, physician, who, but he never existed at all. And he, but he, he only came into, um, he was only manifested when the group got together. It, it was group energy that created these, these things. So it's possible uh, that perhaps some poltergeist activity is a result of the group energy, the group concentration of the people in the household, quite possibly unconsciously. Um, that, uh, uh, and that maybe, maybe that's some, some, some sort of explanation.